What's up, Eagles Nation? Um, I'm a little late with this vid. I was hoping I would be able to film it last night after the game, but then just got busy with some other stuff, wasn't able to do it. But, of course, as we all know by now, the Eagles got a big win yesterday against the Giants, and the ownage of the New York Giants continues with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, they have absolutely owned this uh, rivalry in recent years. Uh, two straight years now they have swept the Giants in the regular season. Um, they've actually won the last five meetings between the two teams. Um, and, and look, they, <laughs> I know a lot of the talk uh, after this game was on what the Giants didn't do, you know, particularly in the second half, what the Giants didn't do. And to that, I, I do. Look, it, 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 is, it, it would be foolish of me, you know, to, to, to not say, yeah, I mean, not giving the ball to Saquon Barkley a little more in the second half, um, you know, and, and whatnot, you know, contributed to it. But you know what? I always will say this about sports. You make your own bed. Okay? Wins are earned. Okay? Teams can do whatever they mistakes that they make, but you have to capitalize off of those mistakes. And I know that a lot of people, Giant fans, Eagle fans, the pundits out there, uh, we'll, we'll point to the fact, well, the, 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 the penalty that wasn't called, the pass interference against Odell Beckham Jr. in the end zone. Sure, that was a big non-call. Hey, it was big. Sometimes, you, look, sometimes things are going to go your way. Okay, I get that. The officiating was horrible across the board yesterday for both teams. Okay, there were calls that were made that shouldn't have been made. There were calls that were missed. There was a, there was a flag picked up on an obvious face mask against the Eagles on a drive. Now, they ended in a touchdown, so, you know, it was no big you know, harm, no foul, but that was a big non-call in that, that situation. So there were call. It, it was, it was a poor job by the officials. Okay. Um, but I will say this, and I, I will point to this play as the turning point. And look, there wasn't any official call that got in the way of this for the giant fans out there. Okay. Giants are up 19 to three. They're driving, they're in points territory before the end of the first half. And you know what? When, when you're going up against a team that you have struggled with for most of your career, as Eli Manning has with the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's, it's well documented, the team that he struggled the most in his career uh, uh, has been the Philadelphia Eagles. And when you're going up, up against an opponent that you have struggled against, that your team has struggled against, that they have had all sorts of trouble against, regardless of the records, what happens? You don't want to make that mistake. And as soon as you make that mistake, here comes the snowball effect, right? So the Giants are driving at the, at the end of the first half for points. They're in field goal range. And what happens? Eli tries to force the ball to Odell Beckham Jr., and Malcolm Jenkins picks, picks him off. And we know over the years in Eagles Nation, and Giants fans know this too, that Eli's been a giver against the Eagles. He likes to give us the ball, okay? And that was a huge play. I mean, if you think about it, if the Giants score a touchdown on that drive, game over. Okay, there's no comeback for the Eagles. If the Giants get a field goal on that drive, which they were in field goal range, it, it's it's a 23-3 to three game. It's a 20-point game going into the second half. And the way things have gone for the Eagles in recent weeks, I mean, I'm not saying that that would have been game, but that's very close to being game. Because the Eagles in the last two weeks have, have just, have, have look, they, they played piss poor. And, and particularly against the Saints in the first half of this game against the Giants, they're playing piss poor again, and they're, they're, they're down 19-3 to in that situation. And that interception by Malcolm Jenkins, that lit the fire. And that was huge on both sides of the ball and, on, and for both teams because you saw what happened in the second half. Eli Manning got gun shy. Look, Eli was having a nice game before that. And I know Saquon was making his plays, but Eli was a confident quarterback there up until that interception. As soon as that interception happened, you saw the difference in the second half. We saw a lot of Eli face in the second half. Okay, he was flustered. He was he was making bad decisions. He wasn't as crisp as he was in the first half. And I get it that the Giants didn't use Saquon Barkley enough. I I understand that. I mean, I'm look. I'm I, I'm an Eagles fan first and foremost. But there are players in this league I like to watch, and Saquon's one of them because I remember him in Penn State. I watched a lot of his games at Penn State. I knew he was a uh, a special back, a generational back, a generational talent. I'm still upset with Cleveland for them not drafting him number one that they should have. I know they got Baker Mayfield and Chubb's doing okay there too, but they had a chance to get Saquon Barkley, and and they didn't. The Giants got him, and you know it, it is what it is. We're gonna have to deal with him for the for the foreseeable future. Um, but, um, <clears throat> I also know that um, look, I mean that. That whole second half was a completely different game. 
completely different game. And I know there's all these conspiracy theories. Oh, the Giants just want the pick and this and that. Oh, bullshit. Okay, you, you got to play. If, if, if they wanted the pick, if, if, if that's all they wanted to do is just tank, Don't they wouldn't have even showed up at all for the game. You know, look, the Eagles last week, you talk about a difference. The Eagles last week against the Saints, they never showed up. The Eagles never left Philadelphia and went to they, – they did in, 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 in body, but really in spirit, they just were never in that game against the Saints. The, Sa they, they just, the Saints started rolling and it was over. Never showed up. And, and, and if the Giants were in the same type of situation, they wouldn't have even showed up to this game. The Eagles were rolling from the first quarter on. It would have been over. You know, so I don't buy into that. You know, I, you know people say, well, the head coach was told at halftime, oh, we want that pick, so don't run Saquon. It's like, oh, come on now. <laughs> It's easy to say that now and to look back, but I mean, I I don't subscribe to that at all. I think there was mistakes made on the Giants coaching staff. I think the play calling left you know a lot to be desired. Not getting Saquon involved like he was in the first half that had a big that had a lot to do with uh, uh, the play of the second half for sure. But the fact is, the Eagles still had to make the plays. They still had to do what they had to do in that second half. Listen, Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham Jr. don't play defense. Okay, They're offensive players. And one of the major reasons why the Eagles were able to come back in this game and to win this game was what they did, not only defensively in the second half, offensively. What did we see in the second half? We saw adjustments made. Oh, my goodness. We haven't seen that basically the whole season. The Eagles came out as a completely different team in the second half. They ran the ball more. They, 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 they manhandled the Giants up front. The Eagles won this game in the second half where you have to win games. They won it in the trenches. The defensive line overpowered the Giants' offensive line. The Eagles' offensive line overpowered the Giants' defensive line. They made those running rooms. And look. Josh, I, I've said this about Josh Adams. I like the way he runs. Okay, is he an every down belt, belt, uh, cow type of back in this league? No, but he runs with power and he runs with a purpose, and he runs with heart, passion. That's one of the things that's been missing from this team uh, uh, for a number of games. You know, a guy like that that just you know runs with, plays with that type of passion and attitude. Okay, and that's the way he's run. And I like the way he's run. And, and again, he's not an every down back. But when he's in there, he gives them energy. He gives them a little more oomph. Okay? And I, I like how Corey Clement played yesterday. We've been missing him. We haven't seen a whole lot of number 30 so far this season. He had he was one of the integral parts of this offense a year ago as an undrafted rookie uh, out of Wisconsin. He had, a, he had a tremendous season. And in the Super Bowl, even over 100 yards, he scored a, a, a receiving touchdown, a big touchdown in Super Bowl, uh, you know, 52 to help help the Eagles win. And his picture's up here on this pennant, you know, with that catch from that game. So, yeah, I mean, he, he was a big part of this offense last year. He's disappeared this year, and partly in his own doing. But, you know, he, he had himself a really nice game yesterday. Uh, and, and obviously Josh Adams did too, and they ran the ball. You know, they, they played kind of that old-school smash-mouth type of football, and you're not going to see that every week. You know, do I do I expect the Eagles to do that? I think it would help if they ran the ball a little more. But do I think that they're going to do this every week? No. You know, but la yesterday we saw it. I mean, we saw a team that came out in that second half with a purpose. And they played with heart and they played with passion. I mean, that Malcolm Jenkins interception was huge to end the first half. It took points off the board for the Giants, and it was a big play for the Eagles when they needed it most. And that's something this team hasn't been able to do for the most part this season. You know, and Malcolm, one of the leaders of this team, made a big play. Yeah, I mean, Eli never should have thrown that ball there, should have tried to force it into uh, OBJ, but he did, and Malcolm made the play. Um, and like I said, that play, that singular play, I really feel had a huge reason of why this game turned. It turned right there. I mean, you can see the whole complete difference in the second half for both teams. Um, the Giants, look, you're still up 19-3 to going into the third quarter, and they came out with the heads down. And the Eagles came out thinking they had a shot. Again, when a team owns you, like the, the Eagles have owned the Giants over the years, one play like that, that's a negative, stems everything. It, cha it, it changes everything. And I've seen this with the Eagles over the years when they're, you know, having trouble against one team, you know, like like the Redskins for those years. And or, you know, back in the, when, when McNabb was here, you know, they, they had trouble with the Giants. And I remember games where it was a close game or even if it was, a you know, one side, like one bad play for the Eagles against the Giants and it just turned everything. 
You know, maybe it was a maybe it was a a, a big sack by Strahan or, or an interception or some you know some t play that that stemmed the tide and and here comes the Giants you know against the Eagles and it, you know it's happened so I know being on the other side of it what that is and so when I you know and I'm sitting here as an Eagles fan I'm sitting here right on this seat you know, yesterday watching this game and you know second the first half and I'm I'm just sitting here and going you know you know. I mean, here we are. We're not showing up again, just like last week against the Saints. Here we are. Yeah, and and I, you know, I'm the emotions are there, and you you're sitting there going, man, you know, this team, this team. I don't know. I don't even know why I bother watching this game type of situation, you know. And then I saw that interception. That that turned my feelings around a little bit. So I can imagine what it did for the players, you know. And 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 look, it was a huge play. And and in the second half, look, the Eagles still had to make the plays <coughs> on offense to be able to come back in this game, and they did. They adjusted. I thought Doug Peterson did a great job. It was one of his best coaching jobs of the season so far because he came out and he adjusted. They did something different. They didn't just stay status quo. They, did, they, 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 they took what the Giants were giving them and they used it against them. And, and look, Josh Adams ran well. Corey Clement ran well. The offensive line did a great job. Carson made some throws. Um, was it a perfect game for him? No. But he made some plays when he had to make them. I mean, that fourth down play to Nelson Aguilar was, was beautiful. Um, and with that said, I mean, come on, Doug. I mean, really, third and two, we're going to do a bootleg with a guy still within, you know, coming back with a knee injury. But, all right, the play calling has to be a little better with him, too, okay? Well, like I said, it wasn't a perfect game for the Eagles, okay? Certainly not in the first half, but they made the plays they had to make in the second half, and that allowed them to be able to come back. It was a big win. And look, I mean, look, we're sitting here five and six, okay? So we're certainly not having the year we had a year ago. And, 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 but, but things are still on the table right now. I mean, you talk about the division and I get it. It's not a strong division and, 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 and teams have, have, you know, been hovering in that 500 range. Right. But the fact is we got a big win pretty much end of the giant season. And now, okay. The Redskins have been, have been struggling of late. They've had a lot of injuries as the Eagles have too. Next Monday night, we have a big game at home against Washington. Two of the mo more injured teams in the league are going up against one another. It's a huge game. And, and I get it. It, it. It's not, you know, the records aren't there and whatnot. You know, it is what it is. But the Eagles have, have positioned themselves now in, a, in an opportunity. And that's what it is. It's an opportunity to make a comeback on this season. You beat Washington at home next Monday night, which they should do. Will they do it? Hey, you know what? Washington's not going to lay down. All right, I don't, I, I don't expect Washington to come into this game and just lay down for the Eagles. I think it would be, I think it would be a game. Uh, but if the Eagles do what they're capable of doing, they should win this game. And, and look, I mean, the Saints, I mean, Dallas, they're going to see what the Saints are this week. Okay? <laughs> um. And if the Saints do what they've been doing and what they're capable of doing, they can do us a huge favor by being Dallas, albeit the game's in Dallas. It's not in the, in the Dome in New Orleans, but, you know, Dallas, I don't think, exactly has the greatest home field advantage in, that, in the Jerry Dome over the years. So, you know, we'll see if the Saints, you know, can do, you know, somewhat similar, you know, of what they've been doing. They should roll up again, you know, and, 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 and help us and beat Dallas. Um and then that, of course, if, if that happens and the Eagles beat the Redskins, which are two very good possibilities of happening, it sets up for a monster game the following week in Dallas with these two teams. And I get it. Look, the Eagles have a lot of injuries, uh, you know, more so than a year ago. They've, uh, you know, they've been really bit with the injury bug this year. The secondary guys go down seemingly every week. It's been problematic. Offensive line, they've had some injuries. Uh Lots of injuries on this team. They they're playing with practice squad guys. They're playing with with late round picks, you know, who are playing a lot sooner than probably thought they would be playing at this point. Guys off the street are playing, so it's a different situation than it was a year ago. Even though last season we had some key injuries, other guys stepped up. Now this season, for the most part, other guys haven't stepped up. Now look, I mean, they're not as talented in those other positions like they had a year ago, uh, but. Guys have to step up. I think yesterday guys stepped up. And for the first time in, in, in quite a few weeks, we saw guys, in the, at least in the second half of that game, play with passion, play with a purpose, play with some heart. You know, give us a little something, okay, to be able to come back in that game. Like I said, I, you know, hey, 
people can point to not running Saquon Barkley more, or the, this or that and the other thing. Eagles still had to do what they had to do offensively to come back in this game, and they did. And even though the Giants weren't running their, you know, one of their top, you know, uh, uh, offense, offensive threats in, in, in Barkley, and maybe they didn't get the ball enough to Odell Beckham Jr., the fact is the Eagles were still able to shut them down and still were able to get the Eli Manning more in the second half. They couldn't quite do that in the first half, but they did more so in the second half. They got more pressure on Eli. They were able to do the things that, you know, Eli is used to kind of seeing from this defense, a lot of pressure on his face, you know, him getting sacked a few times. Uh, I thought that, um, you know, Bennett had a really strong game. You know, Michael Bennett, being the veteran that he is, I mean, he knows how to win. He, he won a Super Bowl with Seattle years ago. He was a big, integral part of that defense. Um, you know, that push up front that the Seahawks, you know, were able to make all those years, that helped that great Legion of Boom secondary. Uh, you don't have that type of success in a secondary, no matter how talented they are, without the push up front, without winning at the point of attack on the, on the defensive line. Getting that, pre getting that pressure against quarterbacks makes mistakes. And Bennett did that for years in Seattle as part of the, you know, that great Seahawks defense. Well, he had a really strong game yesterday, and he needed to. I mean, he's one of those guys that needed to step up. A guy playing, you know, more minutes now, more snaps, uh, I should say, because of injuries, because of inconsistent plays and injuries. You know, Barnett goes down. Well, that's Bennett you know, stepping in for him. And we get Timmy Jernigan back. That's good. Um, that helps this defensive line big time. You know, uh, takes some of the onus off of, off of number 91, Fletcher. Um, and, uh, you know, his play will, will get better because of it, too. Um, look, the onus is on the defensive line. I mean, the injuries in this secondary, the fact that they're playing with the guys that they're playing with right now, the Sullivans of the world and, and what have you, the onus is on the defensive line to get the job done. Even on the linebacking core, Hicks is out again. There's a lot of injuries, a lot of uh, uh, um Guys without a lot of experience back there, so that means that your guys up front who have the experience, we saw Jake, uh, we saw Chris Long make some plays yesterday. Uh, that's Long, that's Cox, that's Jernigan, that's uh, Bennett, that's whoever else in that defensive front. They have to win, and we haven't seen for this season. We haven't seen a lot of games where this defensive front is imposing their will and making that uh, uh, wrecking havoc on the opposing uh, uh, quarterbacks and running backs. Uh, enough certainly that we've been you know we we enjoyed a year ago uh, and and it, it has to be better and I still don't like Jim Schwartz's de defensive schemes I don't like that picket fence defense that they run on third and longs and what have you uh, uh, but the bottom line is this defensive front has to win up front they have got to get to the pre they have got to get more pressure on the quarterbacks and cause more turnovers and more mistakes okay they got to get more turnovers and this is something they just haven't done you know, for the most part this season, not a lot of takeaways, albeit they got a big one yesterday. Malcolm Jenkins, and a great, you know, tip of the hat to him. He had a great game. He's one of the veteran leaders on this team. He stepped up, and I think the veteran leaders on this defense stepped up yesterday, particularly in the second half of that game. Yeah, they gave up some plays in the first half. The second half, the guy stepped up, and it happened after that Jenkins uh, interception. So that was huge. Um, you know, I watched Cal Pizzle's um, uh, video after the game yesterday, his reaction. Of course, he's the big Giants fan. Uh, and and he, he made a great point. He said, look, I mean, we can sit, you know, as Giant fans, they can sit here and, 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 and complain about the coaching, you know, the, the, the philosophy of the second half and Barkley and, and Beckham Jr. not getting the ball enough to them. But the fact is they left five points on the board. You know, they, the, the interception in the red zone uh, took away a field goal at the end of the first half. They went for two a couple times, didn't get it. Now, the Eagles, conversely, went. They, they're still perfect going for two on the season, okay? They, they've converted four out of four attempts on two-point conversions. The Giants could, tried a two-point con conversion after they, they scored the first touch. On the first drive of the game, Saquon Barkley scores a touchdown. They go for two, and they don't get it. And it's 6 nothing instead of 7 to nothing. You know, they again, this, later in the game, they went for two. They didn't get it. They, they uh, 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 Red zone inter interception there to Malcolm Jenkins. That's five points off the board for the Giants, and they lost the game by three. You know, you take those five, you get those five points, it might be a different game. Maybe there is no comeback for the Eagles. You know, so it, it, it goes hand in hand. I know that the, the coaching staff let the Giants fans down uh, and, and, and their team down. I know that the, 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 the referees or what have you, you know, hey, you, you can say a lot of things. I can say a lot of things week to week after Eagles losses, okay? 
but the fact of the matter is you still have a 19 to 3 lead in the first half against the team in the Eagles that got blown out a week ago against the Saints and have lost two straight games coming into that one. I mean, look, the Eagles at, at, at the Giants had every opportunity to put this team away and they couldn't do it. You know, and and, and sometimes you give a team a second chance, a, a second chance of life. That's all they need. And that Malcolm Jenkins, I, I I hate to keep coming back to this, but that interception was huge. I mean, we look back at we look back at this season if the Eagles do go on a little run here and win the division and get to the playoffs. I'm gonna look back at that to that Malcolm Jenkins interception, you know, because that was huge. That one singular play may have saved the season, you know, depending on how things go the rest of the way. Look, they still have to win their games, but if they do make the playoffs, if they win this division, if they you know go on a little run here. You can look back at that Malcolm Jenkins interception at the end of the first half of that game against the Giants and say that's the that's the play that turned things around, you know that that turned the fortune of this team around. And yeah, Doug Peterson and and the, and the play calling was better in the second half, and they adjusted. They ran the ball. They they had more balance on offense in the second half. Players won at the point of attack where you have to win, uh, and they were able to come back and get a big win, a huge win. And look, I, it is what it is. Wins are not given. At the end of the day, when you look at the, at the win-loss column, all you see is a number. That's all you see is numbers. You don't see how, oh, well, this team got this number because of this or that. No, it's either a win or a loss. That's what it is, or a tie in some cases. I hate ties. But in some cases, it's a tie. So it's either going to be a win or loss or a tie. That's all you see. You know, last season, the Eagles won 13 games. And, and, and we understand we had great moments you know the Elliott, the the the, the long field, the sixty-two yard field goal. We had, uh, you know, all these different plays. Uh, you know, memorable moments. But at the end of the day, we won thirteen games. You know, we we won thirteen games and we lost three, and then we went three and zero in the playoffs. That's all. You know, those are the numbers. You know, how did we do it? You can you can count to this, this, this. But at the end of the day, that's the record. That's why the Eagles were the number one seed in the playoffs last year in the NFC because they were thirteen and three. So this year they're not going to be the number one seed, but hey, you keep piling up those numbers in the W column, you're going to have a lot more chance of making the playoffs and winning this division. I don't care if it's a weak division. You still get in. I saw the Saints get into the playoffs years ago at 7-9 and nine in a horrendous division that year in the NFC West. What did they do? Beastquake happened against the defending champion New Orleans Saints in Seattle. Seattle won that game. Now they lost the next week. But that game pretty much put them on their on, on the course that they, they went on to have some great success after that. And they had one of the all-time great moments in, in playoff history in that game with the, was the Beast Quake, you know, against the Saints. Saints haven't forgotten about that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's that guy, Porter, the, the cornerback, Porter, who had the pick six in the, in the Super Bowl this year, the year before. He, he hasn't forgotten uh, Marshawn knocking him down. <laughs> Stiff arming him and then going in for the touchdown. Um, yeah, I mean, all you have to do sometimes is get in. I've seen teams get in 8-8, eight eight, win the Super Bowl. Saw the Packers do it. Saw the Giants do it. I'm not saying the Eagles are going to do it. You know, they, they, there's still a lot of things that has to be done, and they do have a lot of injuries. But the fact is you still have a chance, even though you're sitting at 5-6 and six right now, to make some noise, to make, you know win a division title, take it away from Dallas. Wouldn't that be wonderful? All those, all those loyal local Dallas fans who all of a sudden are now showing up in the Dallas gear, you know, walking around the malls and pounding their chests and calling local sports talk radios and trolling on YouTube, the Eagle fans and, and all this and that. Yeah, and then now they want to be visible because their team's winning. I'll tell you what, how awesome would that be is if all these, 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 uh, the, these uh, front-running fans get to watch the Eagles take the division from them, you know, and the Dallas doesn't even make the playoffs now after going on this little run here. That would be awesome. I would love that. Hey, you know, when the Eagles get to the playoffs, maybe win a game or whatnot, who knows? I mean, look, it's a tall order to beat the Saints or Rams this year for anybody. You know, and the Bears are playing well, too. But I would love to, I would, you know, it. It would, it, would, it would make me so happy. Because these, these, these Dallas fans are so smug. They are so, they can, even now they throw the five rings at you, even though they're pretty dusty at this point. But, oh, they are smug. And if we can get the division from them, <laughs> that would be that that would be great. That would be a wonderful early Christmas gift if we can, you know, knock the, you know, be uh, of course win this game this next Monday night and then beat them and they're in the Jerry Dome. Oh boy, this 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 injured Eagles team comes in there and beats them. That would be 
Oh, that 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 would just be great. Cause then you know what? All their fans, all their local bandwagon fans, they would all go away. Well, they would go away. We didn't see them last year. I don't remember seeing any of them. Now you see them because they're winning. When they lose, eh, not so much. They kind of disappear. Maybe they could they maybe they become Patriot fans then. Maybe they were masquerading last year in Tom Brady jerseys because it was too tough to wear the star last year when they were when they sucked. <laughs> I know the local Dallas fans. I know them well. I know who they are. I know what they are. I don't give them any credit. Not one. Not one bit. Because they're not loyal to that team. They're only, they're only loyal when it's convenient to be loyal when they're winning. I know. I know. We all know. So, I think even some of them had Carson Wentz jerseys on last year. I think so. <laughs> I'm talking about the local bandwagon fans that we have to deal with whenever they're winning and the Eagles are going through some tough times. Yeah. We we saw we all we all saw what we needed to see a year ago when we didn't see or hear them when their team sucked and, and we were on our way to a Super Bowl, which is something they haven't experienced since grunge music. Okay? So yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Two playoff wins in two decades. Congratulations. We got five rings though, so you know. Guess they, they must be weighing you down, which is why you can't do anything when you get to the playoffs. Yeah. I got one word for Dallas in, in playoffs in the past two decades. Oops. That's all I have to say. Oops. That's their playoffs the last two decades. Our playoffs the last two decades, though, on the other on the other hand, well, we kind of did something. Yeah. There you go. And we'd be a dynasty to do that. There you go. Yeah. So anyhow. Enough of that. But it's not time to talk about Dallas fans. There'll be plenty of time for that in a couple weeks. Okay? But, look, regardless of how it was done, it was a big win yesterday for the Eagles. Again, the ownage of the Giants continue. You know. I like to remind Dallas and Patriot fans, you know, that you guys lost to Eli Manning in a playoff situation, Super Bowl, you know, a few times. Yeah. Yeah, not us. <laughs> We haven't any, had any problems with Eli over the years. <laughs> There's been no helmet catches or Manningham catches or this situation or that situation. You know, the Patriots had a chance to bring him down in a sack those years ago in the Super Bowl to lead to the helmet catch. The Eagles have brought him down on more than a few occasions. Okay, he hasn't gotten away from sacks with us, all right? <laughs> I like to remind those Patriot fans and, of course, the Dallas fans. Dallas lost to them at home as a number one seed once some years ago to Eli. Mm. We beat them in the playoffs a few times. There you go. Oh, but you got five. Ah, that's all right. It's okay. <laughs> five haven't helped you in a while, and they won't help you this year either. So, anyhow, we're going to move on. Uh in this video. So yes, look, I, I I will always say that a win is better than a loss, and it always feels better after a win. Now, was it perfect? No. You know, were there circumstances in that to help? Yeah, but you know what? Again, you make your own bet. And the Giants gave the Eagles opportunities, and the Eagles took those opportunities. Hey, look, the other teams have gave, given the Eagles opportunities in other weeks. The Eagles didn't take it. I might remind people a few weeks ago when they lost to Dallas at home early in the game, there was an opportunity at a big interception by Rouge Hill, and he let it go right through his hands. You know, Dak gave him a chance to get a big turnover in that game early in that game. The Eagles didn't do it, and we saw what happened in that game. Look, you you got to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. And for much too often, this team hasn't done that, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. But they did that in this game. They got the big interception when they had to get one. Malcolm Jenkins, hey, he liked through it. He threw an ill-advised pass. That's a veteran quarterback throwing an ill-advised pass in an ill-advised time. Malcolm Jenkins took, picked it off, made a big play. Again, if the Eagles make some noise the rest of the season, I know I'm going to th think back to that Malcolm Jenkins interception to end the first half against the Giants when they're losing 19-3, to but that stemmed the tide. You know, that just turned everything around. Um, and again, the Eagles had to make plays in the second half offensively. They did. Now, the one thing I will say, and the one thing that is very perplexing, and, and, and part of its play calling and part of its execution, is again, the Eagles come out in the first half of a game, in the first quarter, first possession of a game, flat. They come out, they score three points in the first half of a game at home against a division rival with everything on the line. And, and and they have done this all season long. They have come out offensively very flat, defensively very flat in games. 
They've let let their opponent dictate to them how the game is going to go, at least for that point uh, of the game. And and that's something they have got to get better at. And I hope it, it changes uh, uh, this week, you know, against or next, a week from tonight, Monday night against Washington. Uh, you got to come out. You got to stop that team early. Look, Washington's a team coming into this game downtrodden. You know, their season has seemingly gone in the, in the opposite direction of where they were. They've had a lot of injuries. Uh, uh, make no excuses, but but that is part of the game. They've had a lot of injuries, as we have. Uh, this is a team that you got to get on early. I mean, you don't want to give Washington any hope that they're going to win this game and turn their season around, uh, AKA, a.k.a. what the Giants did for the Eagles with that bad interception. You don't want to you, you want to come out and be the aggressor. And that's something that I really hope we see out of this Eagles team. We haven't seen it much too much so far this season. We saw it in the second half yesterday though, didn't we? They came out, they came out old school smash mouth. They set the tone in that second half after the the way the first half ended and and that really helped them get this win. And 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 next week against Washington, look I will say this, the Eagles defensively in, in recent weeks have had problems against the run. And for what it's worth, Washington still has a pretty good running back in AP. And if you let them dictate this game, it can go the other way quickly. Uh, the Eagles have got to come out with a purpose. They have got to establish the, the ability to stop the run. And they got to come out and they got to score points. I mean, they, make no mistake, this has been the worst, repeat, the worst first half offense ever. First quarter offense, first half offense in the league. They have been pathetic in the first half of games offensively. Second half, they seem to get it going. Second half, they've scored points. You know, a majority of the points that they've scored this season, point total in the season, have come in the second half of games, including yesterday. Okay? So they have got to find a way to get some points in the first half. Look, you're at home. It's a big game. It's Monday night football week from tonight with a lot on the line. Division, and particularly if Dallas loses this week, which, again, is a good possibility against the Saints, you have a chance to, to, to you know, look, you're at home. The fans are going to be there for you like they are at every home game and on the road <laughs> as well as fan base travels. But you gotta let you got to establish to the Redskins that you're not – this isn't going to be their night. And you gotta do it early. You, you gotta put this team away in the first half and keep them away. Keep the pedal on the metal, as it were. Okay, put this game. Show up in the first half of this game. And in the second half, too. But show up in the first half. Get some points. Get a lead in the first half. Establish dominance early. <laughs> okay, it's just not something this team has done. And again, part of it's been play calling, part of it's been execution. Because it does go hand in hand. The play calling is what it is. If you're not executing it, it, it what's it matter? Okay, and yeah, adjustments have to be made. I get that. But you have to come out the aggressor in this game a week from tonight. And, and I know, it, it, so far the season hasn't been what we, we had hoped, but they still have a shot to turn things around, at least win a division, get to the playoffs, and hey, you never know. You take it week by week, week by week, and that's what the rest of the season is going to be. But they got to come out. They got to come out with a, with a, with a sense of pur purpose and urgency to start that game. And this offense is capable of putting up points. They got to do it. And I know they've had trouble getting Golden Tate involved in the offense and whatnot. Find a way. I mean, they got weapons on this offense. We know about Zach Ertz, but you know what? Defense is trying to take him away. You got to go somewhere else, whether it's uh, uh, Jeffrey, whether it's um, uh, Golden Tate, whether it's Aguilar, whether it's your running backs. You got to find a way to, if, if they're going to key on Zach Ertz, other guys have got to be open. And you got to find him. If you're Carson Wentz, you got to find him. I think too much he, he keys on, on number 86. And look, Zach Ertz have had, has had a tremendous season, Pro Bowl season. He's, he's one of the top tight ends in the league. Uh, he is a real weapon, okay? But a few weeks ago against the Saints, they took him away, and this offense couldn't do anything. you got to find a way to adjust, and that means running the ball. That means finding the other players who are going to be open because if they're going to double and triple team 86, that means other guys are going to be single covered. Someone's got to be open. This team has not taken more chances downfield. Also, I'd like to see them open things up in the passing game. You know, take some shots downfield. If anything else, draw some penalties to the opponent. Get, you know, get a P.I. call. You know, you, you, good things happen when you put the ball in the air at times. I know bad things can happen, too. But good things happen if you, you keep a defense honest. You show them you can go deep. You have Golden Tate. You know, you have Aguilar. You have a couple guys who could get Alshon Jeffrey downfield. Make some plays. And I think it has not been enough calls downfield. And Carson Wentz hasn't, hasn't – I don't know if he's still – you know, feeling it out the rest of the way. I know he's had a pretty good year, but he is still coming off the knee injury. 
But take some chances. Take some shots downfield. I know the Redskins have a decent secondary, but take some shots. I mean, we saw that game against Dallas and what Cooper was doing, and a lot of that was yards after catch. That, that has Golden Tate. This game has Golden Tate written all over it. If you call plays and, and, and have an offense where you can utilize his skill set, which is what Amari Cooper did last week against this, this defense, 90-yard touchdown, most of that was after the catch, make it happen. You know, make it happen. F figure out this guy. Figure out you have this weapon in Golden Tate. Use him. You know, and they just haven't used him in the right way <laughs> to this point. Uh, they got to figure out how. And, um, you know, hope they'll have opportunities this week against the Redskins defense. And But, again, you got to make the most of those opportunities. So, anyhow, look, I've, I've gone on now 35 minutes. I know I always go on long. But um, uh, it, it was a um, – it was a good win. It was a big win for this team. Uh, keeps them alive, you know, for a division. Uh, you know, you can call it a weak division, whatever. But, hey, you still have a shot. You win a division, you, you're, you, you punch your ticket to a playoffs, and anything can happen. I know right now it looks like it's, it's the Saints and Rams, you know, one of them. But you get in, anything, anything can happen. I've seen it before. I've seen, we've all seen it before in the playoffs. You know, it doesn't look too promising this year, but you still, you, have, you get in, you have a shot. Just find a way to get in. And this is a week-to-week -week deal here. We're not looking ahead to Dallas in a couple weeks. We're not looking ahead to the, the game in L.A. three weeks from now. No, we're looking at right now. It's a week from tonight. A home game, Monday night football, primetime uh, uh, football against the Redskins. And another opportunity to get a win and to keep your, your, your hopes alive for a division title and a huge game the following week at Dallas. So, you know, learn from what they were able to do this week against the Giants. Build on that. And, you know, hey, injuries are there. Can't use that as, as an excuse. Every team has injuries. No excuses. I know this team has a few more injuries than some other teams. <laughs> but uh, no excuses. No excuses. You still got to go out. You got to play. And you got to try to play the win. Play with pride. P play with passion. This game is at home <clears throat> next week. It's a huge game at home. The fans are going to be there. This team's got to show up, and they got to get off to a better start. They do. Because they play pretty good in the second half of games, but it's those first halves. They gotta play better in the first half. They gotta set the tone. And and look, the Redskins come in and in, in, in a, a, a downtrodden team, an injured team. You can't let them feel that they have a chance in this game. You know, from the from from kickoff, you gotta be the aggressor. You gotta put this team away early and keep them away, unlike they did against Carolina those weeks ago. Keep them away. Keep them down. You know, I feel it's gonna be another hard fought game. I don't think Washington's going to lay down for this team. I think they're going to come in with feeling like the Eagles do, like they, they still have a shot in the division, you know, for this thing, particularly if Dallas loses to the Saints, which I, I, I hope they do So um, on Thursday night. But, look, I mean, both if that happens, both teams are going to feel they still have a, a say in this division. And the Redskins are not going to lay down for this team. We Again, we have to be the aggressor. we got to come out and be physical. You know, win the point of attack like they won in the second half of this game against the Giants on both sides of the ball. Be the aggressors. Put this team away. Show them the dominance. You know, um, you know Carson's got to have a good game, too. He's got to make those throws. You know, I think he got away with a few passes yesterday. Might not get away with them against Washington. Got to be, you know, careful with that ball. You got to make those good reads and, and make those throws. And and show a little, you know, show a little something downfield. You know, not the dink and dunk all day. I mean, you know, the West Coast offense is what it is. I know, a lot of slant patterns, a lot of screens. But you got to throw the ball downfield too. Be aggressive. You know, again, you know, this is a Redskins team that has struggled in recent weeks. Um, you know, keep it up. I, I remember that game some weeks ago against Atlanta, you know, at home. And they struggled against Atlanta. And, yeah, I mean, Julio Jones, a lot of teams are going to struggle against him. But the, the Falcons were aggressive in that team offensively. You know, and they, they put it up on the Redskins. And, and Dallas last week, they made some plays. And those type of plays that Dallas was making last week, they're going to be there for the Eagles. The Eagles got to make them. Got to make them pay. If they're going to give you opportunities, you got to make your opponent pay. And much too much in the first half of games, the Eagles have not done that. So let's hope for a difference you know, this week against, uh, a week from tonight, I should say, against Washington. All right, Eagles Nation, hey, it was a good win. Any win's a good win, I don't care. You know, we still own the Giants, Giant fans out there. Hello. <laughs> um, 
it, it was it was a good win. It was a comeback win. It was an important win because it keeps our uh, us alive for a division and it keeps our, us alive for the playoffs. And you know what? I'd rather be in the playoffs than not. So let's take it. It's week to week. Let's take this victory. Let's enjoy it. We got an extra day now to our next game. But a uh, big game next Monday night at home against the Redskins with a lot on the line uh, still in that in, in, in that um, in that game, regardless of what happens Thursday night, which we hope goes in our favor. Come on, Saints. Take care of those Cowboys and have their local fans shut up for a week. <laughs> so let's hope for a big win uh, uh, next Monday night. Let's hope for a big win for, for us this Thursday night with the Saints taking care of business against Dallas, and then we got to take care of our own business against the Redskins uh, next Monday night, and then a big showdown in Big D. The big, big showdown in Big D the following week. But, again, it's a week-to-week -week deal here um, next Monday night right here at Lincoln Financial Field against the Redskins. Huge game, uh, and, and let's hope we have that. What, what What's that called? That momentum. Let's hope we still have it going into that game. And show up in the first half, damn it, Eagles. Eagles, let's go. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys around around the channel. Uh, I'll be back again next week with uh, uh, some thoughts on the game. I, I might make a vid before the game. If not, it will be after the game. But uh, I'll be back after, you know, before or after this game. A big game coming up, big Monday night primetime game at home against the uh, the Redskins. And as always, let's go, Birds! I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Happy uh, belated Thanksgiving. I know I said Thanksgiving in the last vid, but I uh, hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Great time with family and friends. I uh, had a nice Thanksgiving. So, you know, good, good, you know, it was good, you know, holiday as well. So, uh, holiday season is officially upon us. We got a nice gift yesterday with the Eagles win. We got to keep getting them now. And, um, you know, we'll take this week to week. All right, everyone, take care. Let's go, birds. I'll see you around the channel. Take care.